Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be talking about the Diamondback headache rack and we're going to be talking about my experiences using this Diamondback HD tonneau cover, one of the strongest tonneau covers on the market, holds 1600 pounds, very secure and we're going to talk about how it handled the Canadian winter. So let's get to it. In this video I'm going to be doing a one year review of the Diamondback HD to no cover. In this video I'm going to be talking about an accessory to the cover itself which is a window guard also known as a headache rack. If you want a more extensive in-depth review you can go check out my main review of the Diamondback to no cover which I'll post a link to in the top right corner of the screen. Basically, this is one of the strongest tonneau covers on the market. It can hold up to 1,600 pounds, and it's built with the added purpose to turn your truck box into a vault of sorts. So let's get to the review. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk a bit about the Diamondback HD system. I've had it installed on this 2016 Tacoma for the past year now. Now essentially what this is, it's one of the strongest, most functional to no covers on the market that you can get for a truck. It holds 1600 pounds, it's diamond plated steel, it has a powder coated black finish and it can hold a quad if you want to put a quad on there. It has some galvanized rods which come underneath the side rails so it's going to be very secure. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted this tonneau cover is not only does it keep your stuff secure but it's also very functional because you can load whatever you want on top here. I've put a quad on here a few times and uh, it's worked very well for that. I haven't had any problems whatsoever. I did install some ramp receivers which really do help out a lot to get the quad up there and Diamondback makes some very deep quad rails so that you can drive a quad up there with relative ease and safety. It's a very secure system uh, in spite of the fact that you're driving the quad up there pretty high, it's probably a lot more secure than a lot of other systems on the market today. So the reason why I installed the headache rack is if I do want to load stuff on top, I don't have to worry about doing any damage to the back window here. It's also quite essential if you're loading a quad on here so you don't drive too far and drive into the window or if the quad rolls, if you have to abruptly stop it's not going to destroy your window. You also get some other lashing points. There's uh, what seems to be uh, some setups here so that if you wanted to put some lights on there or whatever, it doesn't impede my uh, truck bed light, which comes factory built with a Tacoma. So uh, it's pretty good. Now, one thing I did have to do is get some new gas springs sent because the gas springs that support this were not strong enough to support this and the headache rack. So they sent me some new ones. And unlike this side over here, it won't just pop up when you turn the knob. So you don't have enough hydraulic lift, but if you give it a little nudge, it will open like so. So it still is, you know, the gas springs are still strong enough to hold it. And, uh, but once it goes past a certain point, it sits down. I actually don't mind this because it makes it easier to shut when it was being forced up by the hydraulic lifts, it can become more challenging to actually turn the rods inside and lock it. So I kind of like it, the fact that, it's, that it doesn't do that anymore. So it makes for a little bit more weight, obviously, but a lot more security, more lashing points. So I think it's certainly worth it. Diamondback also makes these custom fit cross bins that I've talked about before. All of these are built to suit, so if you wanted one, I will post a link in the description. 
Now from an aesthetic standpoint, the Diamondback HD cover looks great. Uh, I have absolutely no complaints with the cover itself and how it looks. In fact, it really does add a lot to the truck in terms of the aesthetic component. It just looks badass. That's all there is to it. It makes it look like a tank. Now there are two different types of racks that you can get. One's a bit more low profile and doesn't ride quite as high. It's about half the size, but I didn't want that one. I wanted the full coverage, you know, go big or go home type thing. Now with this one, I don't really like the transition here. There really is no transition. Uh, it's not the most aesthetically appealing of headache racks. It's very functional. It's very firmly on there. There's a bit of drilling that you have to do with this but it probably took me about 20 minutes and I had it on there no problem. It's very sturdy, it's just that I think there could be a better transition between the rack and the bed cover right here just to make it look a bit sleeker. You get a bit of a gap here. In spite of that, it's still a very strong, rigid design. I've put a lot of tension on there with tie downs going across all, every way from Sunday and the bolts that hold it on here have like a seven stage washer nut receiver system so it's on there it's secure i don't have to worry about that uh, but like i say i think aesthetically more can be done to this but what i'm more concerned about is function and it doesn't look bad per se i just think that that is something that diamondback might want to look at improving down the road now perhaps the only way you could achieve something like that was to build this as all one piece and weld this on here directly so there wouldn't be this gap maybe add a bit of curvature in there so it wasn't so boxy looking otherwise you know it's not a major thing to me i don't even really think twice about it it's just something that you might be concerned of if you're considering this rack now the other headache rack that they have has a bit more curvature to it it looks a bit nicer. Of course, it's only coming up about halfway. But so if you're planning on loading stuff up pretty high on the diamond back cover, you're not gonna have that window protection. Now, in terms of the powder coating, the first time I took this thing out and put a quad on it, I didn't actually have the receiver system on there. So the quad ramps were resting and rubbing right on the powder coated finish. And that actually scraped some of that powder coating off. And so I had to repaint it and kind of touch it up a bit with some JB Weld, which seemed to work, mind you. Um, that was something that I was kind of disappointed at, but that is my fault because I didn't have the quad rail receiver system built on there. If I would have had it on there, I would have never had that problem in the first place. So the powder coated finish is fairly durable, but if you're putting heavy stuff on there, and you're dragging it on there, you will probably scrape some of it off. So what I would suggest is that if you do get one of these and you're gonna be hauling some pretty heavy stuff on top, just put a big flat piece of cardboard down on it and that should take care of that. Now you don't have to get the powder coated finish. I think it looks great, especially with a darker paint job and it's supposed to give it a bit more protection, but you can just get the plain diamond plated steel without the finish if you want and you're probably not gonna be able to see the scratches and stuff on that as much. Because underneath this, it is that diamond plated steel color, so any abrasions on here, it's gonna be quite noticeable. In terms of surviving the Canadian winter, didn't have any issues with respect to this thing opening or getting frozen shut. There is a gasket which runs along here. The company recommended that I put some WD-40 around the gasket and that would limit the freezing in the winter and I never had any freezing problems. I took this out, this thing sat outside for most of the winter and uh, took it camping this winter and you know, just no issues whatsoever. So I probably opened and shut the thing hundreds and hundreds of times by now. I've taken it off a couple times and put it back on. This is a pretty heavy HD cover. I think the total weight is something in the neighborhood of 120 pounds. I'll post the exact specs in the description here, but it's certainly a heavy unit and it's gonna add a little bit of weight to your truck. Now a truck like this can probably carry between 1200 to 1600 pounds. So in terms of the overall weight, you're probably looking at about 10% of your truck's 
a hauling weight is just going to be for the cover itself. But I've had no issues on the highway or turning in terms of it being too top heavy. Uh, the box will wobble a little bit, so I mean you're definitely going to want to play it safe. If you have a bigger truck like a Tundra or just a, a larger truck like that, then you're probably not going to have to worry about that really much at all. This is a Tacoma, so it has a slightly lower payload, but regardless, it gets the job done. And as long as you take it easy and you're not being too much of a fool when you're driving down the more precarious terrain, uh, it shouldn't do much damage to your suspension. One thing I've really enjoyed about the cover is just the peace of mind of being able to store a lot of stuff in there for long periods of time and just knowing that you know it's secure underneath there. Now obviously it's only secure as the tailgate and perhaps in the future Diamondback will come up with a way to enhance the tailgate security because really uh, this thing, this is probably not where they're going to come in. Uh, if somebody's going to try to break into your truck, if you have one of these on there, they're going to try to get in through the tailgate because that's going to be basically the easiest place because these galvanized rods that go underneath here um, are pretty fairly secure, but you have to make sure you assemble it properly and that you're getting maximum coverage of the galvanized rod underneath the bed rail system. So basically what I'm saying is how secure it is is going to depend on how accurately you install it. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions about the Diamondback HD cover, feel free to fire them down in the comment section. I'll try to get back to as many as possible. And go check out my bug out truck video series and the Diamondback to no cover main review. I'll post links to those in the end cards here at the end of this video. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, show your support by commenting, or you can pick yourself up a bug out roll from CanadianPreparedness.com. A link will be in the description. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.